The language of correction is more than a set of strategies we use to correct students' behaviour. I like to think of it as a mindset that shapes how we think about behaviour, how we talk with students about behaviour, and how we act when we are correcting students' behaviour. And there are four things I'd like you to remember. One is always focus on the behaviour, not the person. The next one is stay focused on the primary behaviour. Thirdly, use positive language. And last of all, select the least intrusive strategy. So let's have a little bit of a closer look at those four things. Behaviour refers to all the ways we act and it's learned. And it's learned in response to our interactions with our environment. Just like at school, the way students behave is in response to what is going on in their environment, both at home and at school. That's influenced by their relationship with teachers, teacher aides, other students, the learning environment, which for some is now remote again and may pose new challenges, the content they are learning and the way subjects are taught will all influence how the students act. And therefore, it's really important that we focus on the behaviour and never think of the student as the problem. One way we can do this is to think about behaviour as being either on task or off task. On task behaviour is when students are actively engaged in learning, such as hands up to speak and taking turns and being actively engaged in tasks like reading, writing, problem solving and asking questions. So this question is on your worksheet, as are all of the questions, and I'd like you to write a list of three to five on-task behaviours you want to see in the students you work with. I'll share a few of the responses that came in. One of the on-task behaviours that Bridget is looking for is students looking at you whilst you're talking or explaining something. Namisha says, meaningful engagement with other students. Maybe you could break that one down, Manisha, too, into some actual actions. Karen says collaborating with peers in a group. Ella's got a, has included her whole list, silent work, concentration, taking time on difficult problems instead of rushing, and listening and enthusiasm. Uh, Susan says contributing to lessons. Juliet says finding a book to read when they finish a given task. Christine says listening to teach instructions. Susan, listening to others, following instructions. And there's lots more. So that's great. You haven't had any difficulty identifying the on-task behaviours. Just keep in mind that sometimes if you make them very, very broad, then it's going to be difficult to give the students very clear directions. And some of you that made those broader statements as we go through today may want to break them down into smaller tasks, like what does the student actually have to do to achieve that goal? So, of course, the opposite of on-task behaviour is off-task behaviour, where students are not engaged in learning, for example, talking out of turn, calling out answers, not paying attention, fiddling and moving around the room. So as long as these behaviours are not disrupting students or staff and do not pose a safety risk, we can use a range of positive correction techniques to support students to get back on task. Now similarly, this time I would like you to write a list of three to five common off-task behaviours that you commonly see demonstrated by the students you work with. Catherine says playing computer games on iPads. Decrilla said distracting others. Pip said walking in and out of the classroom. Jennifer said yelling out. Kelly said talking when the teacher's talking. Karen said distracting others by speaking out of turn and Jane said not following instructions. Some of you gave me more than that but I just read one from your list. So those were behaviours you could 
very easily identify with in a very specific way. So I guess for every off-task behavior, you should be able to go and write the on-task behavior that you want students to, to demonstrate. So for example here, I want you to have a look at that picture and decide what is the off-task behavior you see just in a few words, if you can pinpoint it, and then describe the on-task behavior you want to see. So that should be fairly easy. Again, on your worksheet or in the chat box, it's up to you. Joanne says the student is distracting others and not facing the front, and the behavior Susan wants to see is uh, facing the front. Alicia says talking when they shouldn't be, and the behavior they want to see is to be seated and to work. Wendy said she wants a student to be focused on the task at hand. Leanne said the student's not paying attention is distracted and what she wants a student to do is pay attention to the lesson. Pip says talking to the other student in class time and keep eyes forward and listen to the teacher. So you've all got the idea. So for every off-task behavior, there is an on-task behavior, the positive and the negative. So perhaps think about your list of on and off-task behaviors and see if they are clear enough. They, they should be a bit of a match. So if it's a behavior you want to see on one list and the other list is the behavior you don't want to see, you should be able to match them up to a degree.